so hello everyone welcome back on the another video on DSP processor in the last video we have seen the how can we build the projects for the dual core processor where we have built the project for the CPU 1 and the CPU 2 respectively so following with the last videos now in this video we are going to cover the IPC interprocessor communications so in the interprocessor communications from the one core to the second core we are sending the data and once the second core has received the data it will acknowledge the CPU one and it will give some status and flag registers and that will know that the CPU two has received the data so the CPU one can again send the new data so this process will continuously uh, continuous in the while loop so let's begin with the previous examples as to LED blinking and we will run the both the cores and we will see whether the code which we have shown here is working fine or not so if you have subscribed my channel please go and subscribe the channel for the latest update so let's begin with the code so as you can see this is the code for the cpu one as you can see we have initialized the led one and for the cpu one and the device led two and we have given that ownership to the cpu two so all the GPIO initializations for the C device configurations we have to done in the CPU one, and this is for the CPU two where we are toggling the LED because the ownership which we have given to the CPU two for the device uh, LED two. So now we will build and we will debug the code. So we will quickly come to the debug window so i have come up with the debug window as you can see here so this is the uh, here this is the test underscore ipc this is device debugging uh, window where you can see this is for the cpu one and this is for the cpu two okay so the process will be once first you have to click on the cpu one and the next you have to click on this one and you have to run code for the CPU 2 so now what I will do I will just click on this part so as you can see that LED start blinking still the LED 2 is not blinking once I click on this one you can see that LED 2 will start blinking so once I terminate, once I suspend it, you can see the LED stop blinking and once I terminate it, you can see the LED stop blinking. So I'll run it again and I will run it again. So both the CPU are working independently uh, and both the LED working fine. So now what we will do, we will just add our IPC code to this module and we will see the IPC implementations so I have written the code so I'll just copy and paste the code completely here and I'll come back on the video soon so now I have written the code properly and we will see each and every line for the interprocessor communication so here as you can see here that uh, IPC interprocessor communication is used to send the data from one core to the another core using the shared RAM. So here you can see we have programmed the data sections of the RAM that is the shared RAM between the CPU1 and CPU2 and we have given the, the memory locations for the read data. So this memory location this memory location will be shared between the CPU1 and CPU2. And this is the defined and this is the read memory location and this is the test pass and fail whether 
the CPU2 has received the data or not, it will indicate whether the test has been passed or test has been failed, whether CPU2 has received the data or CPU2 haven't received the data. So these are for the test pass. You can keep the any values here. It is not necessary that you have to keep these values. You can keep the any values. And there will be some sync flag that is the IPC flag 31 and there will be flag CPU1 to CPU2 IPC flag 0 that is IPC flag 0 we have defined so here what next what you have to do you have to define the device initialization GPI initialization interrupt initialization and the vector table because we are using the interrupt for IPC and uh, an IPC0 ISR we are using so that is 1.13 and it is group 1 and 13 number of interrupts in the vector table so now what else we need to do here whatever flags are there so this command what it will do it will clear all the pending flags of the IPC modules and this IPC sync command what it will do it will sync the CPU1 and CPU2 respectively so how it works for example you have run the code for the CPU1 and you want to synchronize both the CPU at the same time so until unless the CPU2 won't acknowledge this sync flag the CPU2 CPU1 won't work so this sync flag is used to synchronize both the codes simultaneously and the command which uh, we want to send the data from CPU1 to the CPU2 that is IPC send command and this is the if you go for the definition for this one you can see IPC send command and it is the IPC type like we want to send the data from CPU1 to CPU2 or CPU2 to CPU1 so this is the IPC type and this is the flag and the flag will be common in the both CPU and this is the address correction enable if you want to send the data from CPU1 to CPU2 this you have to enable this bit and this is the command this is the address and this is the data okay so this is the IPC send command so here you can see we want to send the data from 1 to 2 so 1 will be in the left side and 2 will be in the right side and this is the IPC flag 0 and this flag will be common in the both the CPU and this is the address correction enable this bit is as you can see this is true we have to make it true and this is the IPC CMD read memory and this is initializing here and this is the read data whatever data we want to send this is the read data and this is the data 1 so for example we want to send the data that is we have given the 10 initially so you can send the data 10 from CPU1 to CPU2 oh, this is also the data used, uh, this is used for the address purpose and this is the actual data used, which you want to send from the CPU1 to CPU2 so this is the send command so if we have sent the data there will be in the CPU2 there will be some receive command will be there so we will go to the CPU2 and uh, this, is this, this is the read command and from CPU2 to CPU1 because we are writing the code in the CPU2 so this will be IPC type will be CPU2 to CPU1 and the flag will be common so here IPC flag 0 and in the send command also IPC flag 0 was considered so the flag will be common in the both the CPUs and this as IPC address correction enable that is one always and the address of the command address of the address and address of the data okay so this is the read command so how can how it works uh, this we, we will see later so once and after this one CPU1 will wait for the acknowledge whether IPC flag 0 has been acknowledged or not so once it will acknowledge and it will uh, uh, it will get the data from the CPU2 and if the test pass it will make it pass and it will test is not if the data is not reached it will make it zero so how it will do 
it will check the commands so command it is the address of uh, this IPC command read memory so this is the address of IPC command read memory and if this command is equals to equals to IPC command read memory then we have to check that status will be true and otherwise the status will be false if the status is true then it will send the response to the CPU one that we have received the data and it will make the test pass so once it will send the response what it will do it will get the response if it is true then it will make the status pass and further this will acknowledge the IPC flag 0 that it have received the data accurately and it will clear all the interrupt uh, acknowledge and it will clear that acknowledge group okay so now in the CPU 2 we have given the interrupt initializations and we have given the IPC ISR okay so the interrupt initializations we have given here and uh, that is IPC 0 which we have considered and uh, interrupt registers will be IPC 0 and it will go to the address of IPC 0 ISR and it will enable the IPC 0 interrupt okay so this is what how we are enabling the interrupt for the IPC uh, module and once we have enabled this what it will do it will clear all the flags and uh, it will sync uh, the both the CPU once it will reach this one both the CPU will start at the same time so we will see how it works while we are running this code okay so this is the IPC0 ISR it will receive the data and the data we have given to the data 2 okay so this is what about the IPC now we will quickly uh, run the code and we will see it so I have already run the code and uh, I just run it and I will show you uh, when I will click on the CPU 1 Uh, the LED won't blink and when we are click on the CPU 2 the LED start blinking okay so in the previous code uh, there was independent control of the LED blinking but here you can see uh, the IPC sync command will be used to synchronize the, the both the cores so as you can see here once I have As you can see here, once I have click on this one, so you can see there is no update on the LED. Once I'll click on this one, you can see both the LED start syncing at the same time. Okay, so now, now what we will do, we will see whether both the CPU are working together or not. So what we will do in the CPU one. Uh, we are sending the data right okay so this is the time which we are sending from the CPU 1 and in the CPU 2 we are receiving the data 2 right so whatever data we have writing here it is received on the CPU 2 so what we, what we will do we will just change the data from 15 10 to 15 and we will see whether this data has been received on the CPU 2 or not as you can see it has been received on the CPU 2 and we, next we will change the data 20 and it has received on the CPU 2 now we will see the status whether the data has been received here we can see the data has been received but again this has to CPU 2 has to send the command to the CPU 1 that data should be 
reached right so what it will do what we will do we will check the status okay so we will see the pass and fail so you can see here it is one that means test has been passed that means cpu2 has been acknowledged and it has received the data and uh, it is ready to take the another data now what we will do we will change the data from 50 and you can see it has received the data 50 so this is what we can communicate from the cpu1 to cpu2 and cpu2 can again acknowledge uh, the data like it has been received the data and uh, CPU one is ready to send another data. Okay, so if you have any queries uh, regarding the interprocessor communication IPC module, and uh, you can comment me on the comment sections, I will try to resolve the issues. Okay, and uh, if you have subscribed my channel, please go and subscribe the channel uh, and hit the bell icon for to get the notifications. Thank you, thank you very much.